You're listening to the Infinite Banking Mastery Podcast. Did you know that you could build a tax-free pool of wealth that's liquid and accessible all your life while building your retirement nest egg? Gain full control of your financial future and stop relying on the government and banks. The wealthy have already discovered this wealth building secret. Now it's your turn to get financially secure without following the conventional wisdom that keeps you in debt to banks. Now here's your host, Valerie LaRoque. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Infinite Banking Mastery podcast. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. I don't know how it is in your area, but there has been some smoke in our area. And I'm telling you, my lungs do not like the smoke. So hopefully I can get through this podcast recording without coughing repeatedly. Okay. So I did want to wrap up my thoughts, some of my thoughts from the last podcast, because it was just so important that I want to make sure to reiterate and just kind of explain again, some of the most important points from last week's podcast. So the most important thing to remember is that IBC, the infinite banking concept is a process, not a product. And the whole life policy is a vehicle, happens to be really the best vehicle, that we can use to implement the infinite banking concept. Whole life is an asset, not an investment. So therefore, it's not the place to look for rate of return. But instead, it is a cash flowing asset. That, when paired with the process of infinite banking, can be amazing. The growth of your overall system can be amazing, even to the point of completely smoking the other vehicles or investments you have for seeking rate of return. But together, these two things put together, that is, utilizing the infinite banking process, building your wealth, and storing your wealth within a whole life policy, and then borrowing against it, borrow against this cash flowing asset to invest in other things such as investments, such as your business, other investments, real estate, et cetera, whatever your creative mind can come up with, this can really supercharge the growth of your wealth overall. So I just really wanted to get that out there, summarize it again, really just go over a quick summary of what we talked about last week to make sure the importance of it is stays with you. And so today's podcast, what age should I start saving? What age should I start saving for my future? I'm sure that people know they should be saving on a regular basis, at least for your emergency account or emergency funds that you want to be able to have on hand. But what age should you start saving for your future or your retirement? Well, as soon as possible. Start young. Childhood, even if you can. Starting as young as possible is super important because time is your greatest asset. So time is your greatest asset. Anything that you are putting money into to save into or invest in is going to do better the more years you have for it to grow. And when you have an asset such as whole life that is able to continue to grow and snowball year after year, it just gets better with age. Because remember, there is no risk in a whole life policy. It is only going to go up. It's going to be guaranteed to grow. Of course, when I'm referring to the cash value, that does depend on your age. If you are over 70, your cash value may not be as exciting as you thought it would, the growth on that. But it is guaranteed to grow. And so having that, the time frame on that to be able to really allow that compounding interest to just snowball and get bigger and bigger that is your greatest asset. I often do also say that your ability to work would be your second greatest asset. So you, that's something else that you should be protecting is your ability to work. Now that's something to do with disability insurance. That's not whole life. That is a disability policy, protecting your ability to work, your ability to earn an income. Because of course, as I've said before, if you were suddenly unable to work, you will still likely need money to pay your bills, your mortgage. You're still going to want to eat. You're going to have a car payment, maybe other things, costs for your kids. You're still going to need that income. And even having a disability policy through work may not cut it. Oftentimes, a disability policy through work that pays you, if the employer's paying for the cost of that, it will be taxable to you. So you may end up with something like, 30 to 40, 45% of the income you are used to bringing home when you have a disability policy through your work. So it's just a good idea to check it out. 
look at it, look at the benefits, review them and see what you actually have. So at least you know what you would receive in, in the event of a disability and maybe supplement that with a disability policy. Now, again, that was a big digression on disability. I will get back to saving and when you should start saving. So I wanted to give an example of different age groups saving for a goal of hitting 1 million by age 70, just so you can see the differences. Now, these amounts that they're saving, we're going to assume that they are earning about 5%. And so to get to 1 million by age 70 at a rate of 5% earnings, a 25-year-old would only need to save $5,964 a year. A 35-year-old would have to save $10,545 per year to get to 1 million at an interest rate of 5% by age 70. And a 45-year-old would have to save about $19,955 per year. And a 55-year-old would have to save $44,136 per year to get to a million by age 70 if those earnings are growing by a straight 5%. So you can see that the longer you wait, you have to save a whole lot more to be able to reach the same goal. Time is your best friend. Start as soon as possible. I think people sometimes have a misconception of how much they will need in retirement. People think that maybe a few hundred thousand is sufficient. Really, well, statistically, anyway, I haven't checked this this year, but I used to talk about this all the time. Statistically, People oftentimes when they retire will still need about 100 to 125% of their income that they were using before retirement in retirement. So oftentimes people think, oh, I'm retired. I don't, I won't need as much money. I will need less money. So it will be okay if I don't have as much income as I did before I retired. But keep in mind that a lot of write-offs go away. Sometimes people's houses are paid off, so you don't have that write-off anymore. A lot of write-offs go away, and so you may have more taxes because you don't have as many write-offs. Taxes might be a little higher, or and also taxes just will be going up, most likely in the future. But also, when you're older, you don't know what's going to happen with your health. Are you going to need a hip replacement or heart surgery or something that's very expensive that you hopefully will have insurance for, but you never know how much of that portion you're going to have to pay for. And of course, maybe you just want to enjoy your retirement. You'd like to go golfing once a week or travel once a month or once a quarter. Maybe you just want to be able to enjoy your retirement and not sit in the house all the time. So keep in mind that you're going to need about 100% of your income. Maybe it can do with a little bit less than that, but that just has been statistically what people end up really needing. So I have a quick story to share about a gentleman that I was talking to and met with some years ago. He was a scientist. He was working for a great company. He had an excellent job. He made about $400,000 a year, and he was about five years away from retirement. He wanted to retire in approximately five years, he had a couple of children in the university at that time, and he had a beautiful home, beautiful cars. He had a really great life. He had plenty of wonderful material items and was living it up. And so when I asked him about his retirement accounts, all he had saved to that point was about $50,000 in his retirement accounts. And he was thinking, okay, well, now I can really save as much as I can. And so that's just a story that sticks with me because... There's just no way in the world he would be able to retire in five years with only 50000 in the account and with his high lifestyle, his large living expenses, and the fact that he was used to living off of 400000 a year. Now, even when his kids go are done with school or whatever, it just wasn't enough for him. He wouldn't have enough to retire. I mean, he had courses depending on Social Security and other things, but it just wasn't going to be enough. So I just like to make sure people understand you don't want to wait till the last minute to try and save up what you can for your retirement. You want to save as soon as possible to have that time be on your side and really help to build your wealth without you having to do anything, but letting it sit there and grow and accumulate that compounding interest. Now, of course, letting your money sit versus flowing your money using an infinite banking concept is going to be way better. You want to keep your money in motion actually to have the growth of your money really be amazing, but you just want to make sure you're not waiting till the last minute to 
start hitting that savings hard to hit your retirement goals. It's not going to do as much for you. It's going to be much more difficult to get to your goal. You're going to have to save essentially your entire income in this man's situation to get close to a goal for that. And I know that that's impossible. You might think, oh, I'll wait until such and such is paid for, or this is done, or my kids are out of school or whatever. But really, it's better to start as soon as possible and not wait because time is really going to be the most helpful thing for you. So that's really all I have for you today. Start saving sooner than later. And that is in regards to a whole life policy as well. Sometimes people will say, oh, well, I need to pay this off and do this. And and then I can start. It might be a year from now or two years from now once I get all these things paid off. But you know, life happens and that might not go as according to how you plan. And it might take you much, much longer to actually start saving into a, a plan. And so you're going to lose all those years. And when you're looking at the lost time, you have to look at the end of the lifetime. So you're not looking at, oh, I didn't save 2000 this year. Whoopity doo You got to look at age 80 and see what not saving and waiting a whole extra year did to your overall plan. Because it's going to be a lot bigger difference than just $2,000 from that year when you missed it. I hope that makes sense. I know I'm not illustrating anything for, for you on the podcast, but hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying. If any of you would like to connect, would like my help, would like to work with me as your advisor, please reach out. I would love to connect with you. My email address is Valerie at Alpha Omega Wealth.com. I look forward to hearing you. Hope you reach out and hope that you have a great week. Thanks for listening. I will talk to you next time. Thank you. This is the podcastfactory.com.